Welcome to Deadly Dames and we're doing another top 10. So for this one we're looking at our top 10 David Lynch. Um, this was probably the most difficult one to do because we really fought over the position that these movies went in. But let's get started. So at position 10 none of us argued that it had to be Dune. So it's actually not a bad adaptation of Dune but it's definitely not his best work. Let's keep it short and sweet at position 10. It's not his best work. Kyle McLaughlin's good. That's about it. Oh. I know it's based on a book, and from what you've told me, because I know you really like all the books, but I think it's quite a a tough one to make a one yeah. film about. I, I think it's you know, more about so a, much in the books. So I it needed to be something could. like Lord of the Rings. It's because the books are that big. It should have mm -hmm. really been like that. If it'd be yeah. made nowadays, it would probably have like five parts. I don't and think they would three hours it. long, but mm -hmm. no, not. Now. If it, he turned down another movie to do this one, I can't remember what it was. It might have been even like Star Wars or something like that. But no, uh, not that. Oh, uh, but a near Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, the one that we've just move, done. Move, moving on. <laughs> so position nine um, is Wild at Heart. Now, it's this is sort of David Lynch's um, take on um, Wizard of Oz. There are a lot of good acting in this, and the storyline itself isn't all that bad. As I said, it's really just um, instead of her going to the land of Oz, she's running away with Nicolas Cage, and you can kind of understand why our mum would be chasing her down to get her back. If any, if your kid said I'm running away with Nicolas Cage, you'd do the same, wouldn't you? You want to shove that cage over the top of his head and shove those bees in, like in uh, the remake of The Wicker Man, <laughs> so you can hear his amazing acting coming out, but. Uh, I think it went in position nine because of Nicolas Cage. Let's keep it like that. <laughs> but, uh, at eight, we have Inland Empire. Now, I've actually never finished this film, which is terrible. Um, it's a very, very long movie. It's actually a film that was taken from an original idea to be a TV series. And I think if it was a TV series, it probably would have been a bit better, a bit easier to take in. But Alison loves Inland Empire and she really fought for it to be in position eight. So yes. what's it about? <laughs> it's a really complicated story about um, somebody <laughs> who's trying to basically do her biggest role in a Hollywood movie, but it is a really complicated movie. There's some brilliant scenes in it, um, and I love the ending to it as well, but it is really long, as you say. It would have been brilliant as a TV show, but I'm not sure that it would have brought in as much uh, like an audience as the likes of Twin Peaks did. But I just really enjoyed the movie. I think Laura Dern was brilliant in it, especially playing lots of... It was almost like she was playing different characters who were living through her. So it was just brilliant. And some of the scenes in it are, are great as well. I mean, I mean, the only thing I didn't like is the digital camera work that he did in it. To be honest, I think it's great. a movie that I do need to try again. I think what puts me off is it is like three hours long, isn't it? I think it's, it's 180 minutes, so it's like two and a half hours long. Yeah. So it's definitely not a movie you'd shovel on at 11 o'clock. No, it's three. The next day. Uh, it's three hours. Is it? Uh -huh. Shit, I can't count. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it does have um, like a storyline along with it is in the sense of it is almost like a mystery. Um, so you should watch it. And then there's lots of like different views on what it could be as well. So it's really good. What I've seen is good, if that counts. <laughs> I just need to finish it. But we'll move on to Lost Highway. Now, this was very difficult because Lost Highway is actually an excellent film and it's got the, as, as you've said many times, David Lynch movies always have that particular scene that sticks in your mind and I think definitely in this one it's the telephone scene. Very creepy. I think that the actual actor that's in that scene, he creeps me out. Um, and the music that's in this is brilliant. This was, um, this was the one that was supposed to be Marlon Marlo Manson, Manson, wasn't it? But Trent, Trent Reznor, Reznor ended up doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's certain songs that fit perfect into the scenes, such as like the Marlon Manson's "I Put a Spell on You" and David Bowie in the end oh, credits. It just uh, well. yeah, it really just brilliant. fits perfect into mm -hmm. it. Uh, Patricia Arquette is particularly amazing in this movie. It's basically a love story told in two different versions, so it's two different men, but it's Patricia Arquette playing two different characters. But they're intertwined. It's as with all David Lynch movies, it's very yeah, difficult to explain. Yeah, I wondered if it was maybe like <clears throat> a different reality. Like if she'd gone with like a nicer guy, this is how it would have been. But if she'd gone with like the the bad guy who was a bit dodgy and a gangster, or like it could this be is her past and her future it, as well. Yeah, it could be. I think it's alternative realities, like mm -hmm. you said. But, but that's this a good, isn't, yeah. That's the mm -hmm. good thing about Lynch films, though, is that they are open to interpretation. I'm about to mm -hmm. say the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Move on to Razorhead now. Razorhead's actually an excellent movie and it's David Lynch's first feature length film. Um, we, I would love to put this higher but there's just other movies that 
beat it to the punch, but this movie is basically about a young guy who ends up getting his girlfriend pregnant and you're living his nightmare of what he thinks fatherhood's going to be. Mm-hmm. It definitely, the Black Off soundtrack actually works in favour for this well, movie. all the way through the film, there mm-hmm. is like a, a drone and that's a wee bit... Because it works towards the nightmare, like the constantly... Uh-huh. Dark, like, like this dirty, constant uh, looming uh, fear. Or gloom. Of, of, mm-hmm. um, and it's just like the fact that it's black and white yeah. works towards that as well. Uh-huh. There is no colour in it. It's just It's just a, on, a uh, stark black and white and stark lighting. And, and, and again, that is the reality a, of a situation that, well, that, you know, he got his girlfriend pregnant and, well, tough now you have to deal happen, with it. So uh, he's dealing with a stark reality and... And having to, to be responsible and it's deal with the consequences. Uh, yeah, consequences, fear. Um, definitely show it at schools to make kids want to wear condoms. But, uh, but I think it's an excellent film about, about the consequences of your actions. You it's know? fear the unknown, I think, as well. Because there are scenes where, you know, the baby's born. It looks like, well, I think it looks like a, a Sorry, an alien tea? chicken. It's, it's weird looking. It's and all it does is yeah. scream. And it's quite horrible looking. But... I mean, he doesn't know what's going to happen. He doesn't know what to do with it. And he doesn't know what to do, so I think there's that fear of the unknown, or, oh my God, how am I going to cope with it? And he gets left with it. What do I do? But yeah, I would have loved to put this movie higher, but so much good David Lynch. So, again, this is another one I would have loved to put higher. Fire Walk With Me, Twin Peaks. Um, I feel that this movie should have came closer to the Twin Twin Peaks series, but I loved that we got the movie because obviously the series was cancelled and ended abruptly. So it was great to have this movie that showed you a completely different version of uh, Laura Palmer because in the series, you, you just think she's a bitch and a slut and you feel nothing for her, really. She's just a dead body wrapped well, in plastic. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I think I think that that is how she's portrayed in Twin Peaks. Is she is a body and she's dead. You know, that's done and dealt with and it's all the other characters around that that you really focus on in Twin Peaks but in Fire Walk With Me you actually see what her life's like and you actually find out that she was a really nice person and she worked with a lot of different people like the disabled boy and the the agoraphobic man who couldn't leave so she actually had a a positive influence in a lot of people's lives in the town Mm -hmm. and she did have this sort of second life where she was a bit darker but she didn't do it because she likes to take drugs and you know sleep around, sleep around. Like she was actually a very sad and I showed woman. you the horror of what led up to Twin Peaks mm-hmm. the series so it was great to see that other side um, I would have actually liked to see more which is why we're desperate to see the new TV series it'd be good to see what happens but, but I think to see where Twin Pe- Peaks could have went Twin to Peaks well, <laughs> I think that, that you really need to watch this film after the series so that y- you can really appreciate what the, led the, to uh-huh. the circumstances of what the series is and even what the characters like because you don't think of her as anything other than well she's the last that got killed and other than that you don't think about her past and you know oh, the things the that she's done of how she died as well no, it's it is yeah. nasty it is not because but definitely you're right if you're going to watch twin peaks fire walk with me don't watch it till you've watched the full t- two seasons of twin peaks it's the best way to watch it so we're moving on to david lynch's probably most mainstream um, sort of more Hollywood movie, which was Elephant Man. Um, this movie's amazing, and it's another movie that benefits from being in black and white. It's not a movie that you can ever imagine being in colour with the subject matter. It's obviously based on a true story, and it's actually this movie actually made me cry at the end of it because it's not a nice story, um, and it's a true story of what, what happened to the guy that dubbed the Elephant Man. Uh, excellent acting, and obviously John Hurt's amazing as the Elephant Man, and Anthony Hopkins is always good in pretty much everything he's in, apart from the remake of Wolfman. But um, we'll not get into that. But yeah, this movie's amazing, and I think we've all we've all actually seen this movie, so and we all love it. I would I would have loved to have put this closer to the top because it is such a good film. But damn, David Lynch and his amazing movies. We had to settle at putting Elephant Man at position four. So we're moving on to the top three now, and we have. Mulholland Drive so you could argue Mulholland Drive is actually a very similar storyline to Inland Empire because it's about a girl a naive girl going to Hollywood to become an actress and then what happens to her so it's basically two timelines again sort of intertwining them 
a bit a bit like Lost Highways. There's obviously mm-hmm. a theme that David Lynch likes to see multiple realities or of what to, like, could happen. Figure out is <clears> it <throat> a dream? Is it uh, an alternative reality? Um, is it you someone's yeah. way of trying to rewrite their own story to make it easier for them to believe exactly what's happened? Um, so I quite like that. And what I like that, as you said, David Lynch leaves a lot open to interpretation. You could take what you want from his movies or his TV series. Mm. And again, this was actually a movie that was initially piloted as a TV series. And I think, again, it would have benefited from seeing a bit more of Mahalon Drive. I would have liked to have seen it as a TV series. Don't get me wrong. I, I think it would have been a one-series TV series, but it would have been good to see it. Mm-hmm. I think Naomi Watts, and I can never remember that lassie's name, Laura Ellen... Harry, they were phenomenal in it, and again, this has got a standout scene in it with uh, the Celine Seal scene. Many people would say it's a lesbian scene, but it is the Celine Seal scene. So we're moving on to position two. And if this was just movies, Blue Velvet would have been right at the top, but we cheated and put a TV series in there. But Blue Velvet is the scariest one out of all of the David Lynch movies, especially the the scene with the ear. Oh, that seems horrible. Um and. Dennis Frank Hopper. Frank himself, yeah, he's just uh, a terrifying character. Frank is like a proper true monster. He's not like a Michael Myers or... You uh, know what I liked about this film, though, is that none of it is supernatural or, or maybe it happened, <coughs> maybe it didn't. It's, yeah. like, based in the real world and, you know, these are horrible things that are happening and this was, this is what the characters are going through and you know, that's what's scary is that, you know... Dennis Hopper's character, for example, he could be a real person out there somewhere. And He's that's that's horrible. what's scary. And the thing that happens to the women in this film, I mean, that probably happens all the time, all around the world. And it's... Oh, please don't let there be that many Dennis Hoppers out there. <laughs> yeah. But I think um, Kyle MacLachlan is an actor. <coughs> I think he is quite underrated. And I think his performance in this film was really good because obviously he starts off being quite innocent and he's got you know a girlfriend and you know you can imagine they're probably waiting till they're married and then the the events of the film kick off and you know I think he learns quite a lot about the horrors of <laughs> life, life. Uh, but uh, yeah as I said if it was all about movies Blue Velvet would have been the top but we cheated and uh, kind of put the top spot to Twin Peaks because it is never going to be anything out there any TV series in my opinion that's ever going to beat Twin Peaks it had everything. It was murder mm-hmm. mystery, Sci-fi, psychological, yeah. uh, supernatural. horror, supernatural. But everybody mm-hmm. was talking about it at the time who killed Laura Palmer. But you know, you, you don't really get that as much with. I suppose everybody talks about Game of Thrones and things like. But this Not wasn't a massive this. budget. Uh-huh. This wasn't a mm-hmm. huge budget project. And if you think about it, it's actually a pretty simple idea that they took. You know, a murder mystery of who killed Laura Palmer, and then just developed it into this. I mean, who wasn't scared of Bob? Bob is terrifying. He's almost as uh, terrifying as, uh, right. as as Frank, but Bob is scary. And you, as I said, the whole thing of Bob's around the person you don't even meet mm-hmm. um, because she's dead at the beginning of the series. But I can't wait to see what they do with the new Twin Peaks. I feel that it was cut short really early on and it would have been great to see what kept happening when he, when he got to the Black Lodge and what happened after that. But I can't wait for the new Twin Peaks um that's the reason why it's at the top, but just we all love it. We've seen Twin Peaks and how many times uh, and we still love yeah, it. It's a perfect mm-hmm. mixture of soap type TV shows, mixture with all that kind of mystery and um, everything going along with it. It's just brilliant. Basically what we're saying is it's a TV show for everyone. I think yeah. everyone who loves a certain type of show can find something that they love in Twin Peaks, whether it's romance or mystery or horror. You're going to find something that you love in Twin Peaks and that's why we put it in position one. It's cheating a little bit, but I think it deserves to be there. Um, hopefully you agree with our David Lynch uh, top 10. And uh, thank you as always for watching. Please like and subscribe. Take care.